So thank you for logging in for this 30 minute session. Um, so again, for those of you who have not been a part of each of the sessions, they have been a little bit of a sequential build as these are the four pillars of stress resiliency, yet they're also uh, quite effective uh, on their own because each pillar has some really juicy content that uh, is meant to be used as a tangible practice to understand more about yourself and, and what you can be doing on a daily basis to, um, well, build stress resiliency, you know? <laughs> so that's really the purpose of what today's call is about, this being the fourth of the four pillars. Today's pillar is titled, We Are Complex. And what I really want all of you to be able to walk away with today is potentially a new perspective uh, of how your emotions work and how the world works. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about self-compassion and we're definitely gonna do some practice because you know what's the point of knowledge and theory if you don't actually have the experience in your body? We need both. So the first thing I want you to understand about we are complex is that it's really important as children for us to understand black and white of what is right, what is wrong, where are the boundaries, what's safe, what's not. That's an integral part of, of being human and learning how to navigate this world. But if that's where the lesson stops, if it, if it stops with black and white, then we're missing so much about who we actually are. So what I want you to understand is that you're actually many things. And the way that I discovered this was through my own self-inquiry when I started noticing and reflecting on, you know, well, some days I feel this way. Some days I feel really open and connected and full of energy. And then there's other days where, you know, I feel like I'm not a very good person or I make awful decisions. Uh, I could have one moment when I'm feeling joy and then the next moment suddenly I'm hit with a wave of sadness. And then the next moment I'm distracted. And you know, as I really started taking inventory on all these different states and all the different voices, um, what first came to me as like, oh, well, I'm, I'm crazy. Um, I then realized, no, actually I'm human. And this is the human experience that we actually are complex and we can have many different things going on at once. And when we understand that, and learn how to hold space for that, that's actually where we get our immense strength. So one of the ways to really understand this is um, there's two different terms I want you to understand. One is tensegrity and the other is biotensegrity. Tensegrity is a term from architecture and it was coined by an architect named Buckminster Fuller. And what he discovered was that when you actually use two opposing forces and lean them in on each other, it becomes exponentially strong. So initially you could even just think of a teepee, right? How these um, pillars lean in and it creates this structure and it's quite strong. Well, we can take that tensegrity on a larger architectural realm and, and see all the different varying triangles that create a sphere or a bridge you know, we, there's still lots of space, we can still see through it, but it's exponentially strong because it's adaptive and the force is now held within the entire structure. So this was then taken a step further by Dr. Stephen Levin. And he said, well, there's also biotensegrity. And biotensegrity is speaking to the way our body is formed. So our, our body is uh, fascia. Right? It's, it's just a structure of fascia. There's um, gel-like substance, there's strong um, tendons or collagen and even bone. Uh, and then there's also more of like elastic properties. And it's all of that that creates the entire body. So we can take this idea of tensegrity in architecture and understand that's actually how the human body works as well. So a wiggle over here in the form of biotensegrity is actually impacting the entire structure, right? So you can't, uh, before that it was more of a lever system of like, oh, the shoulder is a lever. And when we engage here, we can lift this arm up. There you go, that's how the arm works. And what they discovered after doing a lot of different autopsies was, oh, that's not really how it works. You can't move one part without actually affecting the entire system. So biotensegrity is understanding that Strength is um, compounded when we actually get our whole body working together and see it as one unit. 
So we can take this we are complex over to the other side of the spectrum and understand and we are all one. And it's through those two seemingly opposites that we actually get the complexity that we are, that is human. So what's true on one level is true on all levels. So we can see outside of us tensegrity as architecture being exponentially strong. And then we move into the body, the physical structure, and look at biotensegrity to understand that the web-like structure of our body is built in the same way. And then we can take this into the mental realm. So if it's true outside of us and inside of us, what does that mean for emotion or you know, our, our mental activity? So then we can start looking at, as I mentioned in the beginning, these various emotions. You know, where often we get tunnel vision, we zoom in on one, like, oh my God, grief is everything right now. It's so heavy. And now we can understand that even in the grief, we can step back and know that there's space for joy. And when we can hold grief and joy simultaneously, that's where we get our resiliency. That's where we get our strength. So the same case would be um, if we zoomed in on joy. And if we had tunnel vision on joy and we didn't hold space for anything else, that actually, it doesn't work. You know, we can't attach to joy the same way that it's detrimental if we attach to grief or see it as everything. So this is an opportunity for you to understand that no matter what you're feeling right now, there's space to step back and see, well, where's the tension? Like, where's the space between this thing that I'm focused on right now and what it's seemingly opposite might be? And that can change day to day as well. You know, in one moment, if you're sitting with grief or sadness or any of the other heavy emotions that I'm sure all of you are very well um, versed in right now, you know, so for grief as the example, when I sit with grief in today's body in this moment and I ask myself, well, what's the opposite of grief right now? The answer might be joy. It could be passion. It could be aliveness. It could be connection. Right? So these are all high quality concepts that are the opposite, but they have different tones, different feelings to them. And that's where you start to access of what kind of, what flavor of grief or what flavor of sadness are you actually in right now? And to be able to step and acknowledge the opposite. And it's not about demonizing grief or trying to get rid of it. It's actually creating more space for it, stepping back and recognizing that you're more complex than this one emotion. And when you allow yourself to open the doors in the house of your being and invite a few more people in, you know, fill up the dinner table with all the different emotions, there's actually more strength, there's more power, and there's like more control there. So in our meditation today, what I would love to do is is guide you into a little bit of a, a framework of what that can feel like in the moment to honor these seemingly opposites so that you can at least just have a few moments where you're not trying to avoid or distract yourself from what you're feeling, but you're actually expanding it and recognizing there's space for more and there's strength in that tension. Tension is not a bad thing. Tension is good. It's necessary, but too much of anything is no longer a good thing, right? So again, this is not about even demonizing tension. It's about getting into right relationship with tension, okay? So Uh, why don't we just dive in and do a little meditative practice and then we can have a little question and answer period Um, or if you need any clarification or any resources we can conclude with that so first step is to find comfort depending on where you are that might just mean moving into a corner and closing your eyes or maybe you have a little more space you could lay down on your back in shavasana Or if you're in your chair, you can just lean back into the chair and find some support so that you don't have to do all the work of holding yourself. And when you close your eyes, allow that be an invitation to move in to meet your breath. Just notice what your calm, steady, natural breath feels like. And right away in this relationship and observation of the breath, we start to experience opposites. The inhale is vastly different from the exhale. 
Yet without both, we would not be complete. There would be no strength. There would be no life in your breath. We need both. So take this first minute here to just be with the seemingly opposite sensations of the inhale and the exhale. And notice how you can't attach to either one. And in fact, if you try to attach to any moment within each breath, you're going to miss out on some of the goodness and sweetness that your next unique breath has to offer. So this is an opportunity to just be in the moment as the moment is here and to let it go just as quickly so that you create space for this next moment that is awaiting to be met and felt and experienced. And if you're noticing that the act of being with your breath is really difficult right now, just gift your mind and body the reminder that it's okay to take your time and that this will most likely happen layer by layer. Just be willing to be a beginner as you continually redirect and come back to your breath. And now, because discomfort and heaviness is usually the, the loudest or the easiest thing initially to come into contact with, just take a moment here to hold space as you call in a heavy emotion that is near or at the surface for you. And take a few moments to recognize and really identify what that is. It might start with, you know, labeling it as, oh, this is sadness, or this is grief, or this is fear, or anxiety, or anything within the realm of the heavy emotions. And it's okay if you can't label it, perhaps you're more just at the level of the sensation of, of just noticing what it feels like. And and it might be complex enough that it's, it's difficult to label it or that might not feel necessary to label it, but you're feeling it. You might notice certain areas of your body are, are having that feeling tone of heaviness more than others, or it might be jumping around, it might be difficult for you to even land on and, and get to know. And most likely, if that's the case, you can just kind of settle in the fact that you're anxious and just be with the, the popcorn or the moving that's happening. And when we first come into contact, it, it can feel, you know, really big, all consuming. That might not be the case for you, but if it is, just know that's normal. And as we continue breathing and choosing curiosity over and over and over again, just take a moment to, to feel into what, what would be the exact opposite of what you're feeling, this, this heavy emotion. You know, what would feel like the opposite side of the coin? And this is not to smother the heaviness or to replace it. This is the opportunity to step back and, and follow the tension, that, that line that connects us to the opposite end of the spectrum. And it might be, you know, on the other end, it's a feeling of lightness or embodied or trust or love. And there's really no right or wrong here. It's just basically finding, you know, tuning into the heaviness and then 
tuning into the, the lightness. In whatever way that that shows up for you, if you want to describe it or, you know, if it has a very unique feeling tone to just, just feel it. As we step back and practice holding both. Recognizing that in our complexity, there is space and potentially even nutritious, integral qualities by being with both. And you might notice that some areas of your body are just, you know, that's where the heaviness sits and other areas are where you get access to its opposite. And it's possible that both are in the same area. You recognize that, that your heart, your body, your mind is strong and capable. And again, exponentially stronger when we honor and hold space for these opposing forces. Let's just allow a few breaths here. And know that if another sensation or emotion wants to be included, that you can create space for that as well. And that might be frustration or exhaustion or resistance or distraction. No matter what comes up, you can invite it in and include it into this matrix that you are visualizing and creating right here and now. So rather than just one triangle of you know, the two opposing forces and, and your loving awareness as the third point, but now potentially there are some other pieces that are popping up and it's creating more of a, a 3D or a 4D version or visualization where no matter what arises, you respond with, yeah, you're included too. Yeah, I'll feel you too. There's a place for you as well. And you as the loving observer, are just getting to bear witness to your complexity unfolding right in front of you. Just allow a few more breaths here. And just notice the feeling tone in your body now. And if you're feeling, you know, a little bit overwhelmed or anxious, just invite you to spend a little bit more time and attention on your exhale for the next few breaths. And if you are on the opposite end of the spectrum where you feel shut down, overwhelmed to the point where, you know, you just can't, you know, and that's often what I say in those moments, I just can't. You know, if you're feeling a little bit more of that, then spend a little more time and attention on your inhale for the next few breaths. And if you are just right in that window of tolerance in that, that balance point where you're, you know, after you assess and you're like, you know what, I'm feeling okay. Then your invitation is to allow your breath to be balanced where the inhale is four to five seconds and the exhale is four to five seconds.
and know that that can shift breath to breath as your state is not a fixed point. When you're mindful and really paying attention, you might notice in one moment, like, ah, I'm starting to feel a little anxious. And so that's when you allow your exhale to be longer and deeper. And in the next moment, you might notice like all that, I took a few too many long exhales and I've actually moved myself down into hypoarousal. I'm feeling lethargic. Then you shift yourself back with a little more of an inhale. And then you enjoy those moments in, in balance when that's what's there for you. So let's just take one minute to just notice that. Utilizing your breath to shift as if you're trying to stay in the center of a river. And each moment you're assessing, have I drifted? Do I need a little more? Do I need a little less? And see what it takes to find that middle point. Now, if there's any area of your body that just feels like it would be served with some loving hands on, you can put your hands on your body, or if there's any other way to soothe or connect with yourself with movement or, or the visual of directing your breath into that area, just take a few breaths here just to be connected and soothed as you address what you're feeling, what you're noticing. Right, within your next few breaths, you can begin to open your eyes and take a look around your space to support grounding, really landing here. And just take a moment as you scan through your space to land on something. It could be a color or a shape, a shadow, and something that sparks your curiosity and feels good for whatever reason. doesn't matter why it feels good. Just let your eyes land on something where you're like, ooh, yeah, that spot something about that that just feels good. I feel that goodness in each breath. And slowly you can bring yourself back to your screen.